After three short days of digesting both beauty and bread, we packed our things and loaded the car. The MVP of the trip so far, our box of bocce chocolates that we read in bed each night, so relevant to our days, Omni is convinced that I've planted them. Our last one in the Milan apartment was Have Friends, Tis a Second Existence by Baltazar Gratian. The day before that, Omnia got Happiness is like a butterfly, which when pursued is always beyond our grasp, but if you sit down quietly, may land quietly on you by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And today's is, I'm always astonishing myself, it is the only thing that makes life worth living, by Oscar Wilde. So much wisdom from such small chocolates. The truth is, I am astonished. At the fact I'm in Italy for around the sixth time before turning 30, at my fluency in a language I haven't used at all in almost three years, but most of all, I'm astonished at the independence two brown girls have to decide they deserve an eat, pray, love trip of their own. When people ask me what I'm doing here, part of me feels compelled to answer with some substantial reason. I'm shooting pilots for show concepts. I'm writing a book. I'm a wing woman for my best friend in heartbreak recovery. As if answering, because I can and it makes me happy, is not valid enough. As if somehow external accolades take priority over our own purely self-inducing desires. But I say that life's too short to please other people. So pack your bags and take your eat, pray, love trip. In the worst, you'll come home with a credit card debt and a few pounds heavier. But sometimes that's a reasonable price to pay for self-discovery and discovering how much bigger the world is than the problems that keep you up at night. Do you feel like taking trips, it's like a, does it hit the pause button or does it actually help you move forward? Like is traveling running away or is it moving you forward towards where you want to be? Travel definitely helps me move in the right direction and it helps me rewrite, when it comes to romance, like rewrite things with me in them. You're the main character in your life again now. The most critical thing right now is for you to be in love with yourself again. Yeah, and when things are, are not good, then you leave what's not good. Like, that's meant for you. You're meant to leave. Remember that famous scene in there? Yes, I do. With, with the pizza from Napoli? Pizza time. Pizza time. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Hit the pause button. Let's do a little recap of where I last left you. Hey, what's up? I'm Joe. I've traveled around for over a decade now for work, for life, for love, but most importantly, for friendship. I decided to meet up with my best friend, Omnia. We are really going to Italy. Who I met in New York City in college, but then who lived all over the world, like New York, LA, South Africa, and ended up in Cairo. We've mastered the art of the LDF, or the long distance friendship. We're currently in Italy, because after a broken relationship, a failed business move, and an overall lackluster for life, we knew the only way to get ourselves out of a funk was to road trip from Milan to Rome for 10 days. And because writing makes an experience timeless, I journaled the entire thing. Okay, so it's day two. Today's goal was truly the art of fare niente, which we all know about here in Italy. But we woke up at noon. We sure did. We got coffee in the we house. slept for 10 hours. Slept, well, you did. I stayed up writing. <laughs> she knocked out. I did. And then we just kind of roamed around. We have had a great Such a good day. two days. Yes. Great, I'm happy. Why is the camera blurry? No, it's perfect. You would think I have it figured out, but I- You look I, perfect even when you're blurry. I might look better when it's blurry. <laughs> No. It's like travel droop. I'm drooping. <laughs> Om's the kind of person who carefully curates every order at every restaurant, substituting things she doesn't like for her most specific cravings, almost as if it were her last meal. Some might find it annoying. I find it both commendable and brave. Asking a chef to change a recipe here in Italy is a death sentence. But she goes for it ruthlessly at least twice a day. She knows exactly what her palate wants, but sometimes it's disappointed. On our second day in Milan, a friend of hers from Egypt flew in from his new home in London just to see us. My brother from another mother. So this is why you just need to have good friends because they have good friends and then when you meet good friends, and good the, friends, the they become good friends. The synergy is just crazy, man. Yes. 100%. Yes. Okay, so Absolutely. this is Bilal, my Egyptian brother. Hi, guys. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa Okay, parli in italiano anche. Aiwa. So Benvenuti. Grazie. He's Italian? He's Italian. And he's British? He's British. And he's Egyptian. Egyptian. And he's Masha Egyptian. Allah. Oh. We met him for dinner at a restaurant his Italian wife recommended. Promised the best plate of pasta in all of Milan, we showed up with empty stomachs full of expectations. I learned two things that dinner. One, 
never ever order whole wheat pasta and two, Omni's glare can kill when her mushrooms show up cold. With limited language, she made it a point to communicate how no one should mess with her pasta and the tenacity earned us both freshly made bruschetta topped with chilled mozzarella. She wasn't always like this though. I've had the honor of getting a window into her life, observing her evolution from college days of too many commitments in an attempt to please everyone, to a grown woman whose no-nonsense attitude will get her what she wants, or even better. But with romance, it hasn't panned out like the cold mushroom plate of pasta, and that's a big reason we're on this trip to begin with. Buongiorno ragazzi, come siete? I am... what? Siete. Yes, I think that's right. So, as you can see, we have picked up the whip. We are currently in Milan still, but we're gonna go to Lake Como today. Ah, road trip! It's very stressful, so my friends from Greece said that the Italian drivers are the worst. But I think every culture accuses other cultures of being the worst drivers. So, please tell me, who do you think are the worst drivers in the world? From my hour of driving in Milan, it's scary. <laughs> and I can't wait to get out of here. I need wilderness the older i get the more nature i need and so it's been a good time in milan beautiful place beautiful city where are we <sighs> stressfully driving in milan stressfully <laughs> why are you so frantic for what because these crazy drivers it's not crazy Listen, this is not crazy she's coming from egypt, egypt. Where, where it's actually crazy but these tiny scooters <laughs> These tini cars. Ma adesso, è l'ora di uscire, I guess, nel lago. Partiamo. Vamos. What? That's Spanish. Jesus. There's just so many people in cities, I, I can't get used to it. Like, there's a person right next to the car right now. Like, why are you so close to the car? Like, so close. <sighs> so Milan came and went, and the next scene is Omni and I Googling what's good tire pressure in Italy with shitty service and apparently a shitty car. Within less than five kilometers out of Milan, the service light went out for low tire pressure, and it was then that it hit us. Collectively, we both know 5% of what one needs to know about cars, and here we were embarking on a two-week road trip down Italy. The good news is, between the both of us, we can figure almost anything out. Me with my language skills and extensive catalog of having dealt with chaos in foreign countries, and Omnia with her superhuman people skills that translate in every language even when she doesn't speak it. Her Egyptian grit adds both efficiency, we save so many minutes with all of the time she's made me jaywalk, and patience after living in the hectic belly of the Middle East. She keeps me sane when I start bitching about overly complicated roads and bad signage. Jojo, this compared to Cairo is nothing. Needless to say, we need each other. However, road trips aren't for the faint of heart. You commit to your co-pilot having to share the smallest of spaces for hours at a time, no matter how hangry and sleep deprived. Choose them wisely. Alm and I have tested our friendship over the last decade though. Outsiders likely observe our sisterly bond as temporary, seasonal at best, but the joy we leave in our trail was fermented with, yes, the good times from college and trips shared, but also the cold distance of a falling out. When it was all said and done, we rekindled our love and realized the definition of a soulmate had nothing to do with a man. We made it! Siamo arrivate. Lake Como, as in como é possível. My favorite habit is waking up and choosing to sacrifice a few extra sips of necessary sleep in the name of solitude with a good view. I'm sitting on our private little balcony so close to Lake Como I'm getting thirsty with the gentle slaps of water below me. It's the kind of quiet that invites you to listen to the thoughts that have taken a back seat to road trip plans and attempted check-ins with people back home. Maybe this is my point of no return place. That place that sneakily lures you in with such engaging views and massive power, it persistently convinces you that nothing else matters. I've only been here for 12 hours and I'm almost convinced Lake Como is the most splendid place in the world. Morning everyone. It's about to be a really good morning because bam. So I'm gonna sit my little booty down, have a coffee moment. Con el lago de Como. You cannot make this up. I don't know if I'm more surprised by how beautiful this is or by how we only paid like $120 a night for this Airbnb. We are home. And 
This is the view. So you come with a friend and you end up paying around what you might pay for a really fancy hostel for this. And the apartment is adorable. So in other words, travel with good friends who have good taste and be willing to go a little bit further away than the touristy areas. It's not all about being central. Cause what I need is centrally right here. Anyways, this is me being so hyped without even drinking this coffee, but this is how you know it's really good. And I always think people grew up here. People live, actually live their whole lives here. And traveling is the opportunity that you get to put yourself in the potential of an alternative reality. Like hypothetically speaking right now, I'm living in Lake Como, but like it gets me thinking, how would it be if I did live here? I would eat a whole lot better. <laughs> We were on a quest to be the main character in our lives again. And so we pretended to live in Lake Cuomo, even if only for a few peaceful mornings, indulging in the simplicities of slicing a lemon and boiling water and pretending like instant coffee actually tasted good before playing the part of perfect tourists on the balcony. We came to do what you're supposed to do here, consume. Delicious views, pastries that taste of childhood, and espresso so brief you'd never realize that you just sipped a century's worth of tradition. And to take our morning consumption over the top, we went to the restaurant next door in the piazza to get a bruschetta pizza for breakfast. Let me explain. On Am's usual customization ritual, she even concepted an entirely new delicacy, the bruschetta pizza, or bruschizza, working title somewhere between dipping freshly baked bread into the richest olive oil of all and the first bite of crispy tomatoes, I saw that she had arrived. It's fresh, it's tomato, it's bruschetta, it's burrata. It has to be now or never. The thing about arrivals is that they're rarely when you land. It's that moment when you're so present that every other place in the world melts away. I don't think I've ever seen you this happy. I'm so happy. And maybe that's one of the ways to become a main character in your life, arriving. After making friends with the server who had helped us make the bruschetta pizza, bruschizza, he pointed us up the hill, promising us a beautiful view of Argenio, the much less touristy village north of Lake Como. So we committed to the hike, taking our leftovers with us. Um, have you ever hiked with a pizza box in your hand before? Nope. <laughs> bruschetta pizza, baby. The pizza box told the entire story. We could have it all. A walk back in time, clear skies, and life's finest every direction we looked. whispering about how full we felt in alleys filled with people living their everyday Italian lives. No words, babe. I thought it couldn't get any better, right? Until it does. And then it just suddenly does. But in that moment, words would not do the hike justice. Plus, I accidentally forgot to record audio on my new camera. So even if we did say anything worthy of making this video, you would not be able to hear it. As a punctuation of our farinante kind of a day, we treated ourselves to gelato, inspired by the grandma we chatted up down the hill. According to her four-year-old granddaughter, the best gelato shop in town was only a few meters away. <laughs> of your life is being so present that nothing else except the moment that you're living matters. It's honoring that little voice inside of your head that whispers, you deserve to feel happy. What did Alan say about Alan, us? Alan, our amazing host from Milan. Omnia and her friend were very polite and attentive to everything. They can transmit a rare positivity and a radiant personality.
easy and accurate in communication. So the apartment was perfect when they left. Thank you. They can radiate? They can transmit a rare positivity. Thank you, Alan. Oh. Thank you, Alan. Mwah. Bachi. Bachi. Come carino. Questo so, ragazzo. I just, I just, thank you. You were amazing. It, it was a reflection of what you, what you were doing. Top notch. And he saw us. In our realist form. Because he said we what? Who says that Trans in a review? Who man. says that in an Airbnb review, y'all? They Your can profiles. They, I know. They can transmit a rare positivity and a radiant personality. He sees us. Come on. We should put this on a dating app, Alan. <laughs> I'm putting it on my resume, <laughs> my dating app profiles, on my Airbnb account. <laughs> now Ong um feels bad. Alan, you, my friend, are... A drop of heaven. Why are you saying this? Because you feel bad. Why? Because Alan was amazing and he and he wrote great things about us on, on the review and I wrote great things about the Airbnb <laughs> on the review. <laughs> <laughs> this is like that travel faux pas, like who's gonna leave the better review? And the thing mm -hmm. is like you don't see their review until both people leave the review. Yes. So and it's a classic case. And Airbnb used to do this thing where the where the host writes it first. But they made me write it first. But he didn't see your review until he finished his review. Exactly. So it's a game of like, who's gonna be nice who's or who's gonna, gonna be, be better? Be, yeah. Who's gonna be better? Who's I always write it? novels yeah. in my Airbnb. If I like them, yeah, they're gonna know about I it. Novels, but not. They can transmit a rare positivity. I'm sending you this video, Alan. Oh, okay. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Okay. So the main downside of our beautiful Airbnb that was a gem is this. We're on the highway. Thanks, Tom! That's my suitcase. Oh, look, this is the view. But it's playing Frogger, you're playing Frogger. So this is the main road, but we have to park up here. You got it! <laughs> Thanks. She is the world's greatest travel buddy. Thank you, my love. Of course, my love. Okay, I really gotta get rid of most of this stuff. Yeah. I should have come with an empty suitcase. 